We've got something to share with you today, and I think you're gonna be really excited. So we've taken everything we've learned from Quest 2 and designed an all new headset to do just that. This is Meta Quest Pro. Quest Pro is the first in our new line of advanced headsets, built to expand what's possible in VR. It takes what people love about Quest 2 and adds a bunch of new technologies to help you do more in the metaverse. It's all in a beautiful design that's comfortable to wear. Quest Pro is our sleekest form factor yet, with a super thin set of lenses at the front and our first ever curved cell battery at the back to give it a perfect balance. So our new headset design with this open periphery lets you see the physical room you're in. You can quickly jot down a note, grab something on your desk, or just be aware of what's happening around you. But you can also use Quest Pro's magnetic light blockers for a more immersive experience whenever you like. We've also redesigned the whole optical stack to make it better than anything we've shipped before. The new pancake lenses work by folding light over several times and let us make the display 40% thinner compared to Quest 2. The new lenses aren't just thinner. They also put more pixels in the center, giving you sharper, clearer visuals, which makes reading text a whole lot easier. Yeah, and the LCD displays have 37% more pixels per inch than Quest 2. And thanks to our new local dimming technology, 75% more contrast with richer and more vibrant colors that just make VR even more engaging. This is also our first device to use the new Snapdragon XR2 Plus processor that we worked on with Qualcomm. Yeah, the controllers are now basically their own computers, which is a bit ridiculous. Uh, we've re-engineered them to track themselves and also work a bit more like extensions of your hands. Yeah, the new sensors track their positioning in 3D space all on their own without using the headset, so you can get a full 360-degree range of motion. And they include our new True Touch haptics, which give a wider and more precise range of feedback effects. You can even add a stylus tip on the controllers, turning them into tools for writing or sketching. You can try this on the whiteboard in your workrooms, or you just flip them around and write directly against your own physical desk. So we're including an all new charging dock that fits great on your workspace and keeps both the headset and controllers charged at the same time. Quest Pro uses high resolution cameras that capture four times as many pixels as Quest 2 and an additional RGB camera to turn pass through into full color, along with a depth system made to understand your environment and work with it. Another big part of Quest Pro is how much more expressive you can be. You can see here how people's avatars reflect their expressions and reactions. This makes your shared social experiences so much stronger. It's powered by our Movement SDK, our newest addition to Presence platform. Wait, what are you doing? I'm eating toast. I'm really hungry. This is a high-end device designed for work and for people who want the best experience that we can build today. We're really excited to get this into your hands, and it's available for pre-order starting today for $14.99, and it ships on October 25th. We are bringing Microsoft Teams immersive meeting experience to MetaQuest uh, in order to give people new ways to connect with each other. Uh, you can connect, share, collaborate as though you were together in person. Another piece of this is that we're working on enabling Horizon workrooms for Teams. So people will be able to join a Teams meeting directly from workrooms. And we think that this kind of cross-device, cross-screen experience will be the foundation of the virtual office of the future. Many people are already playing our most popular games like Flight Simulator and Minecraft in VR today. Uh, and with xCloud Gaming, you can stream hundreds of games to any device, allowing you to connect with gamers in all new ways, whether they are right next to you or sitting on the other side of the world. Um, and we are partnering to bring the service to MetaQuest Store uh, you'll be able to play 2D games with your Xbox controller projected on a massive uh, screen on Quest. Uh, it's early days, uh, but we're excited for what's to come. Hey, we're here together in Horizon, and this is the first time that we've done this at Connect. And this is a preview of our next generation of avatars. They're so much more expressive and detailed than anything else today, and they have this unique meta style to them. But I'm excited to start rolling these out later next year on phones, VR headsets, and more. Hey, Igram. Hey, Mark. Hey, want to update everyone on the latest with the avatars ecosystem? Yes, we have so many exciting things going on. We want you to be able to use avatars anywhere you want to express yourself. And we're also bringing avatars to video chat. That's right. 
starting with Messenger and WhatsApp. If you want, you'll be able to show up as an avatar. It's going to add a whole new dimension to video chat. Avatars are going to be central to how we express ourselves in the future. And this is a unique opportunity to build some really interesting things at the intersection of expression, social interaction, creation, and commerce. With Horizon Worlds and Workrooms, we're already starting to see early glimpses of what this social metaverse could look like. A lot of the underlying technology for the future of computing is still in the research phase, but we have working demos of this stuff and it's pretty mind-blowing. And we now have a working demo that lets you control an AR or VR device with motor neuron signals. Now, I'm not gonna show you the headset this year, but here's what I'm seeing while I'm using this. Just the gentlest flick of my thumb to check my messages. And with another quick movement, I can answer while I'm on the move. Uh, or I can even take a photo. Now, the goal here is to make these interfaces faster, higher bandwidth, and a lot more natural. Here, you can see two people playing an arcade game with EMG. They're both using the same gesture, but because no two people are exactly alike, they do it in slightly different ways. The neural interface continuously gets better over time at understanding each person. Here, the algorithm is learning in real time how to respond to the EMG signals the person is sending with only the slightest of hand movements. And now, the person is able to communicate their intended actions to the computer with almost no hand movement. This is a genuine transformation in the way we interact with the digital world. So we're gonna be able to teleport anywhere and be with anyone no matter how far apart we physically are. And you're right, one of the keys that will unlock this is avatars that truly represent us. So, last year, we showed you early progress on full-body codec avatars. Then what sets codec avatars apart from other high-quality avatars that you might have seen is that they're fully drivable. So that means that they're not limited to preset movements or expressions. This is an avatar that you can control live in real time with no need to render or export video. Of course, securing your avatar will be critical. We're already thinking about things like encryption and tying your avatar to an authenticated account. But beyond privacy, we've continued to develop this technology. For example, it's now possible to change your virtual outfit whenever you want. Cool as that is, it's the face, expressions, eye contact, slight motions, that is most quintessentially human. So I made one of myself. Now we've made them a lot more expressive. And not just simple things like looking left, right, up, down, but also the nonverbal cues that we rely on to communicate with each other and understand tone. Things like raising an eyebrow, squinting, uh, widening my eyes, or scrunching my nose. You know, these avatars are way better at capturing those subtleties that define physical interactions. They're just much more natural. And being able to control the lighting on the avatars adds another dimension of life to them. When we move the light around, you can see how it interacts with my hair, it reflects on my skin, and you can even see it in my eyes. Now, these are awesome, but they also take a really long time to generate. So we're working on something that's a lot quicker for people to use. And we've made a lot of progress with what we call instant avatars. All you need for the scan is your phone, and you can pretty much do this anywhere with reasonable lighting. She scans her face from different angles with a neutral expression for about 30 seconds, then spends another minute and a half making a variety of expressions. And that's really all there is to it. Hi guys, my 3D avatar is ready for use in my phone or VR. It just took a few hours to generate after my scan and the team's working on making that processing a whole lot faster. Now, obviously this isn't the same quality as you just saw with the 2.0 codec avatars. However, they're still pretty expressive and realistic. There's still plenty left to do and everything we've just talked about is still research. It may or may not end up in our products, but it's definitely a glimpse of where technology is headed. Philosophically, we've always been about building in the open. We'd rather show the progress we're making and talk about the challenges we're still working through. We don't have all the answers because some of them just don't exist yet. We're all on this journey together. So if you care about technology and how it can help us connect, if you want to help build a world where we can all experience things that haven't been possible before, if you believe in a future where we can all do more and be more present, then I hope that you're just as excited as I am. So thank you for being a part of this journey, and we'll see you again soon.